Hello everyone, I just finished fixing up another lightsaber for someone. This time, it's the Luke V2 from Corbanth. So this is actually for a customer that I've done an install for before. But this time, he went ahead and bought this second hand off of eBay. It was installed by someone else, and wasn't quite working how it should. So he sent it to me, so hopefully I could get it working right. So I'm going to show you guys the finished product, and I'm going to go over what was wrong with it, and what I did to fix it. Alright, so I guess I'll start by just showing off the fully completed lightsaber and how it functions. I pretty much left everything the way that it came from the eBay seller or whoever made this thing. Um, so all the SD card contents are exactly the same, except I updated the firmware to one of the more recent firmware updates. I think I did 10.0 whatever 7F beta thing, because that's what I've been using for a long time, but I know there's a more recent one, 10. Point something something 8. Um, if you want to update that, you can, but I have it at 10.7 because I know that one a little bit better right now. Um, once I figure out 10.8, I'll do that for my for my builds. In any case, I left all the sound fonts on there. There's a bunch of sound fonts. Um, I updated the firmware, and in doing that, I also had to update the config file. So the config file is more updated. It's got all the lines that are missing uh, from the older firmwares, which this was running, and it is now... It is now updated to, to have all the lines you need for the newer firmware. And everything else, I lowered the volume to 30% because this was really loud. It was at 70% and I really don't need uh, a loud lightsaber in here in my tiny little apartment and my microphone. So I don't want to deafen you guys. So I do have it at 30%. Um, what else did I do to it? I decreased the amount of press you need for the activation button. I think I increased the amount of time it takes for this lightsaber to enter sleep mode but it still has a pretty short time frame for sleep mode. And then everything else, I think I pretty much left the same. So let me just show you how it works real quick. Top button is activation. It's got smooth swing, clashes. Bottom is the auxiliary. And then there we go. This clamp can be a little bit finicky to press the buttons because uh, I guess whoever made this put tape on the clamp and the tape kind of is uneven a little bit. So I would recommend either putting on a new tape or maybe uh, readjusting how this clamp works to hold this thing in better. But uh, in order to do that, I would say bend these little arms outwards. So you can see the one here and then one on the other side. Basically bend it outwards, maybe with some pliers Take off the um, take off this clamp, and then, well, I would I don't think you should take off the clamp because the way I set up the buttons, I'll go over that later. But maybe try to just pry this open a little bit more. Um, start by taking out this arm. So just completely unscrew the arm, take this big piece off, and then just grab these and try and bend it outward, maybe with some pliers or something. But try not to move this section because uh, I'll go over that later. But this was the main issue with the lightsaber. So you could just try to pry that open, maybe bend these down a little bit to hold the clamp, some sort of modification like that, or just set this up with a different set of tape. In any case, buttons can be a little bit finicky to press, just depends how the, the clamp goes in. But for the most part, it works great, as you can see. So we'll leave it at that. Um, I won't be showing you with the blade, because I showed you that a little bit in the beginning and it's going to be pretty tedious to show you the whole thing. So I'm just going to go over uh, what I did to the lightsaber and what was wrong with it now. So you unscrew the bottom, take it out, and this is the main chassis. This actually was pretty much working exactly how it should be working when I got it. Um, except there wasn't enough blue tape on here for whatever reason. I think the previous person used blue tape because there was some blue tape residue left over. Uh, but there is a channel for tape to hold the soundboard in, so I just added my own tape, I cut it to the right size, and used it. It kind of works, but I ended up using a little bit of Loctite here and here to hold the board in. Uh, it does prevent access to the micro USB port with how this chassis is designed, but you don't really need that with Crystal Focus, since all you ever need is the SD card slot. Um, I did need access to it, though, to upgrade to the newest firmware because old firmwares, you couldn't automatically update the firmware with the SD card um, by renaming the firmware file thing to auto underscore fw.dat. Uh, that doesn't work on older ones, so you had to update it with the micro USB or a Bluetooth or whatever. So 
I did do that. It is updated. You pretty much don't need to update it anymore. I think I mentioned earlier, but it's 10.007 or something. I don't know, but it's the beta before the most recent update, because uh, that's what I've been running for the longest time. And they recently released the 10.8 and I haven't learned about it yet, so I haven't started putting it in the, in the lightsabers I make. Anyways, this pretty much worked. I just glued this down and added tape and updated firmware. Now, the main issue with this lightsaber were the buttons. As you can see, we've got a, um, well, we'll look up here. I showed you earlier, but we've got this little chassis section to hold buttons in place. These are two tactile buttons that get pressed by the clamp card. Um, so we've got wires going through here and then coming down into the hilt. Now, this is where it was messed up. All the wires were pretty much broken, so what I had to do was I had to remove this and then reattach the wires, pretty much. Uh, which is easier said than done, because the way this is set up, it is a bit tricky. This isn't a full chassis, it's just a tiny little module about that big, and it is currently held in with some Loctite right there, roughly. Um, and this was running around all loose inside as well. So what I had to do was I had to figure out how to take it out, uh, reattach the wires, and then put it back in where it needs to be. Once again, easier said than done. So what ended up happening was uh, when you look inside on the underside where the solder points are on the opposite end of this rotary chassis PCB, it's, I think it's uh, liquid electrical tape, something like that. Um, liquid heat shrink, something like that to insulate all the wires and keep them in place, which is great, except you can't remove those wires. So whatever wires you have in there is pretty much what it is, but it seemed like it was only for the positive, negative, and maybe not even the data, just the positive and negative going to and from the NeoPixel connector. Um, so that's not too bad, but it's really hard to have access to this because uh, the only way you can get in here is if you unscrew the neck and then you go in from the top and it's really long, so it's hard to put in a soldering iron or anything in there. So pretty much I just use tweezers to, to move wires around, try and connect them, etc., etc. It took me quite a few tries actually because they kept breaking every time I put everything together. So I, I made this thing completely, fixed it, etc. a few different times, but they kept breaking. The reason they kept breaking is because you see how they're set up? The wires come down before the rotary chassis PCB. And what that means is those wires are in the way of the chassis, the main chassis. And that's what this little channel is for. This is to have a little bit of space for the wires and maybe also to stop the chassis from rotating as much. But this is where the wires from the buttons sit so that it allows this chassis to go in all the way. There we go. So every time you put this chassis into the hilt, you have to line up this little notch with the, uh, the button section, and then you'll, you'll sort of feel where it sits. You just put it in there and then it doesn't really move. The issue with that is once this is in, and you twist this in if there's a lot of friction with the chassis or with the bottom of the hilt, it will push this uh, too hard and it will put a lot of strain on those wires, snap them, fray them, etc. So it's pretty dangerous to have uh, your wires sticking down past the rotary chassis PCB. It would be perfectly fine if it was all behind the rotary chassis PCB, but being in front of it, it makes it uh, a lot more liable to, to wear and tear. I tried to do my best to prevent as much as I can with it, but uh, you should still be very careful putting this chassis in and overturning it. Now, there is a method that you, you have to go through in order to try and prevent that from happening and to pretty much make the li lifespan of your lightsaber much longer. So, uh, what I ended up doing was I replaced the wires completely on the button PCB. So these are completely replaced. The buttons have been redone, uh, new wires connected in there. I have um, some heat shrink in there, but I made sure that the wires were super long so the heat shrink uh, ended up behind the uh, rotary chassis PCB. So that way it's only the new wires sticking out and there's no weird bumps or anything. So it's as small as I could get it and as unobtrusive as I could get it. And then I added a bunch of E6000 in there to hold the, the wires down in place in one spot so they don't go moving around so much and hopefully add a little bit more protection against uh, the chassis pushing on either side of it. So that's pretty much what I did with the lightsaber, what was wrong with it and how I fixed it. 
So real quick, right at the end of this, I'm going to show you the method to put the lightsaber together without putting too much strain on the wires. So first you put in the battery. And then instead of putting this in the pommel first and then putting it in the lightsaber and screwing it in, I like to put the chassis into the hilt first and then screw the pommel in. So you make sure you line up the, the notch with the clamp card and the wires, line it up, make sure it's in there. And then you put on the pommel, screw it in, do it pretty gently. There you go. And then you can screw it in all the way. You're all set. And then, uh, Looks like a, the battery. The battery is pretty loose the way that the chassis is designed, so sometimes it shifts a little, so you gotta wake it up a little bit. But there you go. So that's how you do that. I'll do it one more time just to show you. Unscrew it, take it out. And then you can see in there. It's also, by the way, not just being held in with a couple dots of uh, Loctite. It is also being held in with a set screw that is underneath the top part of this uh, clamp thing. And I made sure to put this clamp in a spot where that hole for the set screw is hidden. Uh, but if you ever need access to that, you kind of have to move it and do that. But you will never need to access that. And that's just holding everything in place. In any case, let's put it back together. Make sure to line it up. There you go. Put the pommel on. There we go. Wake it up once more. And then. Then we're all set. I guess for good measure, I'll put in the blade and then we'll be finished. So you take a set screw, take it off. And it seems like whoever made this lightsaber or the owner of it, uh, this is all chopped up. Um, I don't think it's sharp or anything. It might be a little bit, but it's a little wonky, so just keep that in mind. And then I'll put a blade in it. There we go. And then this is how it looks. It's set up with all the blade styles and whatever else it originally came with, and I'm sure you can change that however you want. So there you go. That's the whole look at the lightsaber, what was wrong with it, how I fixed it, and uh, pretty much how to operate it. So there you go. And let's close off the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed checking out this Luke V2 from Corbanth, and I hope you enjoyed listening to me rant and talk about my install process of this and the issues I came across and what was wrong with it in the first place. But anyways, please like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this or if you want to continue watching my build videos that I do. I do have other videos in mind that I'm planning on making, but right now it's mainly build videos and commissions. And speaking of commissions, if you want to commission a lightsaber build from me, feel free to contact me on Instagram. The link is down in the description of this video.